Gregor, you are the person in charge of the interview together uh, with the car and your conversation. So uh, welcome both and thank you very much for joining the young researchers for uh, to sharing your uh, call to, of to sharing your uh, your insights about everything we Gregor is going to ask you about. So very welcome and the floor is yours. Thank you for joining us. Yes, Dorota, thank you very much. And also from my side, Carl, a big thank you to you for your time and for the possibility right now for us to ask you some questions, to get to know you a little bit better and to also maybe get one or two advices from a senior researcher, not only from a senior researcher, but also from the army president. Um, I would like to shortly introduce you and I and took some notes from your uh, homepage. And I would like also right now start with my first, first question. It's not that common, I would say, to actually go to more or less the other end of the world to actually do your PhD. Uh, how did that happen? How did you end up in Tokyo for your PhD in mathematics? Could you please share some information about that with us? Yeah, so uh, thank you. <laughs> it, there are two reasons. Uh, the first one, and, and uh, actually the major one, is that uh, the area of mathematics uh, I was, and to some extent still is interested in, uh, were interested in, is uh, called operator algebras. And it had, uh, at the time, at least uh, three strongholds. One was California, the other one was Paris, and the third one, uh, Japan. So there's something called Tomita Sakasaki theory in that area that, that uh, originated in the strong uh, research group uh, that existed in Japan. Um, but uh, so in some sense, uh, as when I uh, was offered the stipend to, so there was at the time some state scholarships that allowed us to go to uh, do a PhD in, in other countries. I, I couldn't in some sense choose between the three, but then uh, another reason for choosing Japan, besides maybe it was the more interesting uh, environment from many perspectives, was also that at the time I was already married with a Japanese national. So it was also a chance to, to live for some years in Japan. Uh, so I guess we could also conduct this interview in Japanese then. Oh, that would be difficult. I can speak uh, some like uh, daily language uh, Japanese, but not really on professional issues now. And I was never, uh, I never did mathematics in Japanese while I was there because my supervisor was him, himself from the center in California, UCLA, uh, and uh, so he spoke and speaks Japanese very well. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, English very well. Of course, he speaks Japanese, but he also speaks <laughs> English very well. <laughs> Yeah. So after that, when you came back to Denmark, you held several positions at Danish universities until you then, I don't want to list all of them right now, until you then became a full professor in 2007. And then things, since um, actually February, you are the army president following Susanne Prediger. And right now in this kind of position we are conducting this interview with you and we would like to get to know you a little bit. Um, you already said a little bit about your area or research area right now, but I would like to take a step back and first ask you what was your, um, what was your reasoning behind to become a mathematics education researcher? When did you kind of focus your research, focus more on the educational um, aspects of mathematics? Yeah, so that, that's like two questions, but I, I think it was a, a movement over several years. Uh, so I guess it started uh, with I mean, my original intent, intention while studying mathematics at the university was to become a high school teacher. So it was only circumstances uh, related also to, uh, I got a very nice supervisor and so on that I, I became interested in, res in mathematics research. So I always had this interest in teaching also as a student found one of the most enriching experiences as a mathematics student to be a teaching assistant. So I always enjoyed uh, teaching. Uh, and then when I came uh, back to Denmark and, and started to teach again at the university, uh, I also began thinking about uh, 
how to get better at this because uh, in some sense I was just uh, repeating what I had been exposed to myself. <laughs> And, and we had, that was at the time uh, at the University of Copenhagen, I think as a consequence of a new law, a course for young faculty members. So about uh, university pedagogy and, uh, and uh, that was uh, not so satisfactory to my, in my viewpoint, except there was also a practical part where you had to write something about your teaching experience and so on. So. Uh, and then, of course, I began to look for some literature. Uh, also had a very nice supervisor for that part who later, uh, I've later collaborated with uh, Lars Nils Grønbæk. Um, but uh, then uh, looking for literature and also beginning to teach, uh, I think rather soon, a so-called didactical seminar in mathematics. So there are many students at the university, of course, are also interested in in these aspects of mathematics because they want to become teachers. So there was also some, some reasons to take it up for, but you know, many factors uh, and not uh, from one day to the other, but sort of gradually perhaps between 1997 to 2001, two or so. Yeah. So, so kind of like a transition towards yeah, more of the focus. Over several years where I was also, I mean, trying to uh, to do both and so on. Mm -hmm. That more or less leads me to my next question. Could you please describe shortly your area of research? I would assume right now, and also of course from the information you gave me um, beforehand that it's about task design, a lot of it, about that. But I think it's also inspired by your own personal background, meaning that you first studied mathematics and then, as you said, um, gradually became interested in the area of mathematics education and maybe more on a university level. So could you please describe and summarize your area of research? Yes, uh, so it, it's true that one of my main interests uh, have has been and, and continues to be the university level teaching of mathematics, uh, but I've also worked with uh, both, uh, I mean, with other levels. Uh, but of course, very often from from the, let's say from the entrance that is, is more close to, to mathematics. So, so one of the, the I think the main uh, factors in my uh, development as, as a mathematics education researcher was to discover a certain French paradigms of research, uh, especially the theory of didactic situations in the beginning and, and later also the anthropological theory of the didactic, which despite the names, which don't really suggest that, but uh, allows, uh, I think, a, a very nice entrance also for someone whose main uh, or perhaps uh, almost on, only preparation for this comes from the mathematical side. So, so um, yeah, that was a very, that was not shortly, I, I realized that. But of course, university mathematics education and then with a relatively theoretical approach, perhaps uh, uh, also to uh, other phenomena like lesson study and task design. Uh, high school teacher education, teacher knowledge, uh, and so on. That sounds like a very rich area of research, and that, of course, also is reflected in your list of PhD student master students. Some of those are listed on your webpage, and there are many, many, many. So my question would be, how do you actually manage that? How do you keep updated and how do you assign all the words, all the different parts of it to them? And um, how do you stay updated with their progress actually? Yeah, so I think that that is really one of the main uh, attractions of the profession of being a university teacher that you can work with, uh, that you can have the chance to work with really nice and, and creative students and, and do research with them. Uh, so uh, at the University of Copenhagen, uh, the, the master students are, of course, uh, doing a master in mathematics. And then uh, those who are interested in going from there to become uh, high school teachers, then 
so many of these master students are, are then uh, have have that as a motivation that they seek this profession, but they also have a very, uh, I would say, solid preparation in mathematics, which is I think a very good foundation for for um, taking courses and subsequently doing a master thesis in 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 uh, mathematics education. And those are of course then almost all on upper secondary level mathematics. So how, how do you handle that? I think, yeah, that it's uh, of course, but I never have any trouble to remember what the student's project is about or where we were because it's like a joint work. So it's like doing uh, many joint works in parallel, but then luckily uh, a lot of things happens between the meetings. So that that's, I think, very stimulating that, that uh, we talk about something and how to develop the work. And then actually it happens uh, between the meetings uh, without me doing very much. So, so it's, uh, of course, with the PhD students, it's much longer uh, collaboration and uh, uh, deeper in a sense, but, but it's uh, the same in a way that in the beginning, they, of course, it, it's more like a teacher supervisor relationship, but in the end, it's like, like a collaboration. So, yeah, I think you, you should just not, uh, how to, I, should, I don't think there's any methodology other than uh, engage and and, uh, in, and and try to also find out what the student wants to do because it's much easier to do something you want to do than something you get uh, fed or uh, packed down your throat by, by a supervisor. Definitely listen to them and maybe um, come up with a more folky later on doing the work and let them explore themselves a little bit. Yeah, and I would say, especially in the choice of topic, uh, mm -hmm. it's extremely important that this is something which is a personal choice of the mm -hmm. student and, and not just something you take from a list of things you would like yeah. somebody to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we talked a little bit about your work life, I would call it, but we are also interested in getting to know you a little bit as a private person. So I would like to ask you some questions there if it's fine with you. Um, what do you do uh, or what do you enjoy most about your work? Uh, <laughs> well, well, I, I, I think the things we just talked about, the, the, super, the supervision that I have yeah. many, many, many hours of supervision every week. I think that that is always something I look forward to mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to, uh, to see, to follow and support the development of, of uh, what is really research projects uh, uh, in various states. Um, yeah, in the progress then. As I, 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 I also like teaching. I mean, I'm sorry, but <laughs> especially like finding new ways to post uh, exercises or tasks to the students. Uh, I mean, I really enjoy making uh, exercises, designing tasks. Uh, um, uh, yeah, as I say, I said, uh, find new ways to, to approach even subjects because one, I think that's in general one thing that can be a threat to a teacher is to uh, get bored and, and find what you teach kind of trivial. So you can only stay alive if you keep uh, deliberately trying to find new angles, uh, perhaps little hidden secrets of the subjects that you teach. And, uh, and that goes, uh, especially I think for more elementary mathematics also that, that uh, there's no end to, uh, I mean, you never get to understand it a hundred percent, even uh, if you, it, it appears so, and you can make, make it appear so to others, but. Uh, That's actually a really nice advice that you gave us in between the lines. Be amazed by the mathematics that you're about to teach and, and be uh, enjoy it yourself, I think, if I would have to summarize yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, now let's flip the coin a little bit and let's have a look at the other side. So what do you enjoy the least about your work? Oh, I don't know who is listening here. <laughs> what <laughs> <is> it, but <laughs> I don't enjoy... That. So I think we have... Uh, I think in, not only in Denmark, but in many countries, uh, 
mm, have an increasing amount of uh, uh, procedures and processes like strategies and uh, uh, other managerial initiatives that that require lots of meetings and people showing each other PowerPoints about very uh, abstract and, and not so essential things perhaps. So, uh, I mean, I, I and I say this after having been, I was a deputy head of department for 10 and a half years. So I have really also set more administrative meetings than, <laughs> than on average, but but I would say it's something I don't enjoy. It's something that can be very necessary sometimes mm. to attend because if you just leave it complete, I mean, if you just, it, it would be a strike in, in disguise to completely refuse those things. But uh, mm. but I think it, it, it probably has to do with the development also of universities that, that uh, I, I think is some, somehow deplorable, but not some like within at least not within my capacity to change that, that these things seem to grow. So the overhead, apart from your research activities, you mean that part. Um, so after those, just imagine maybe you had six, seven of those meetings, which we discussed right now, or maybe even a yearly interview uh, after such a long meeting day. So how do you afterwards relax? What do you do outside uh, of work to um, actually relax a little bit to clear your head? Yeah, so I have a, a very nice and, and large family uh, that I also try to meet <laughs> now and then. So that, that's probably the most important uh, way to spend time for me outside of work to be with together with family and of course also friends mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah, so, with loved ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so i mean i have also interests like baroque music or ballet and so on but i don't get much uh, time so it would be lying a little bit if i say i spend a lot of time on that uh unfortunately but uh, uh yeah so um, but outside of work, it's, it's, I would say it's also sometimes more limited than I would want because uh, it's not always the day ends uh, when the sun goes down. <laughs> but then, then there's, I could say there's also ermine. In some sense, that's not really work, but, but more like a, a hobby, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, especially in summer when the days are longer and the sun sets later during the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sun never <laughs> sleeps. In the sun. Well, we, do, we don't have the midnight sun here, but it's true, the days are very long uh, at the moment in the north. So I don't want actually to talk that much about the negative sides of the, of the past because I think we're all a little bit tired and hoping for the best in the next months. But yeah, yeah. Um, what is your biggest takeaway? What's your biggest learning from them? past six months or last half a year. Um, it can be work made, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe also from your private life, something. What What did you take away? What? Mm, well, of course, for the past six months, it, it has been a big uh, change to, to be, to have this role in Irma. So maybe I should focus on that. I, I keep being amazed. Uh, uh, about the generosity with which so many people engage in in the work of Irma, uh, and and uh, not only like hesitantly accept to do things, but willingly propose and go much beyond what what you could expect uh, from them in different roles. So, I mean. Irma is really a big uh, association of uh, voluntary people, and uh, and in I would say in the the function I occupy now, you have a kind of coordinating role, but uh, but in some sense, uh, I mean this would be impossible if there if there wasn't this huge generosity of of uh, of of all the colleagues that assume roles from. 
uh, heading thematic working groups to being on a local committee for a summer school and so on and so forth. I mean, there, there are really so many rules, so many roles and, and so many people that that I, I connect to uh, on an almost daily basis and, and where, uh, yeah, I would say if I, if, if, if this was like, if you would have to monitor and follow everything they did, I could do nothing uh, else. But uh, fortunately, uh, things things uh, just uh, uh, work and, and and get get done and so on. So so it's it's. Uh, I think that that is a. I don't know if you can call it a takeaway or learning, but but uh, I I never imagined so many people worked for this uh, association when I just attended meetings or even when I was just a board member who attended the board meetings now and then and had a few uh, tasks myself. So, so that, that is quite, quite interesting. But I, I also have to admit that I'm not such, I'm, I don't have particular skills in terms of uh, overseeing many, many people, many names, many functions, many roles. So like people, if people have told me they changed email, I may have forgotten and so on. So, so it's, I mean, I also really rely on, on, uh, on, on, uh, Luckily, also seems to be the case that that there's a lot of, of um, uh, I mean, that like that the one hundred people you communicate with regularly, they don't expect you to they they forgive you if you have forgotten uh, one or two aspects. So that's also very very nice. That uh, so, but but they. Uh, so that I think that, that that's probably a main outcome from the last six months. <laughs> and, nice. of course, and of course, also, I mean, the the fact that we have been in this terrible situation where I can still not, I, we are still not allowed. I think we will be from next week mm -hmm. or, or the week after that uh, to to work uh, full time in in the university. But we have to do many things online and so on. Mm -hmm. Of course, but this is something we all share that. That so many things can be done. Nevertheless, I mean, we yeah. can plan conferences, we can have seminars, we can. I mean, yeah. there's, there are a few things we we actually are completely. Uh, there, of course, we can't. There are some things with doing observations in schools and so on that um, are impossible or more difficult. But but uh, other than that, it's uh, we have we have learned a lot about. Uh, survival modes. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> I completely agree. And I think those Yermi interviews, that wouldn't be possible in this form. I mean, um, all the attendees right now in, in our Zoom meeting, we could have not come together physically in one space today. Um, so this online format really also has its advantages, like those online meetings right now. Yeah. Um, you already talked a little about, about a little bit about Ermi. And um, this is the next big part I would like to talk a little bit with you about. So what is your story behind becoming an Ermi president? Can you please shortly yes, say yeah, a little bit about that? This can be very short. So I had, I had left the Ermi board in 2019. So I thought now I had done my military service there for six years. <laughs> but then uh, the 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 Irma board came back to me I think in the fall of 2020 and asked if if I would be willing to to take on this role, which is of course normally uh, I mean the new president is selected among the board members, but I suppose uh, uh, it was so no one felt uh, ready or able uh, time wise and so on to do it and and. And so, yeah, I, I was not given other motivation at least. So, so uh, then I thought about it, and uh, I mean, given that the importance of Irma in in uh, at least in my professional life, I I, I uh, felt that this was something that that I could could do could do. And and what is your vision for for the next four years? So, do you have I mean, I don't know whether you have maybe some big plans, 
but maybe you have some kind of things you want you would like to implement or something. Um, could you share that with us, please? Well, that's of course another factor already in the fall of 2020, we were in this period of uh, of lockdown. So I would say mm -hmm. uh, a conservative way to answer that would be to hand over Irma in, uh, at the end of, of this uh, tenure in a state that is, is not worse than <laughs> it was before the pandemic. So we, we really have to uh, to uh, come, I mean, perhaps stronger also because, I mean, like we had, we now have many means of meetings that we didn't think of before, but but I would say at least uh, try to reestablish and, and, and get back to normal with our main activities such as, as and especially of course, the summer conferences that we will now have uh, uh, yearly in the next period, so that that will really be a lot of work. So I, I I don't feel like I have to formulate a lot of of crazy new ideas at the moment because we are really in a period where okay. where survival and and continuation and return to normal is 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 uh, I think a top priority. Um, but of course, uh, something I also worked with uh, in the Irma board uh, would be to have Irma. Uh, and more generally mathematics education research uh, to support the, um, the development of this activity also in, in countries where, where it is not so strong and where it's of course much needed uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, strengthening of the school system and, and, and education as a whole. So, and of course, we're especially thinking about Eastern Europe here Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that Irma really becomes uh, a fully. I mean, the, all of you, all of Europe society, and not just uh, Western Europe and 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 the Mediterranean, as it has uh, perhaps mostly been in in the past. So, um, some achievements then would be what you would what you would like to achieve as Irma president to actually also strengthen then the mathematics education. Um, in other countries, I think that that's ultimately the goal of, of, of mathematics education research is to mm -hmm. uh, strengthen, especially the I would say to be a scientific basis for the mm -hmm. for the formation of teachers who are evidently the motor of mathematics education in general, and there's a lot to be done in that in that chapter in all countries in mm -hmm. Europe, I think. But uh, so this is of course not something for me to achieve, but but uh, to help uh, in I mean to support those activities that that enhance the quality and impact of, of research in this area. I think is even if you support it uh, uh, only with the forces you have, is it's. Uh, I think the ultimate goal. Uh, so. I, I mean, it would be. I, I think we should should probably focus. Uh, it, I mean, the the, the Congress is uh, can can. Uh, I mean, they are they are already very successful and so on. But but uh, uh, I think if we see uh, more focus on on. Uh, on the impact also of the research. So there's a thematic working group now on mm -hmm. on implementation. I think this is a very important uh, and, and in the past perhaps not so so uh, focused on subjects. But of course also the maturization of, of the research. I mean before you implement it it has to 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 be mature. So so this is of course very, very general ideas. I don't know if you mean uh, um, we will yes. move the, the Irma website. This is very concrete, but it's perhaps not so important. So no <laughs> in, in a few weeks, we will have a new website. I mean, uh, for, for the association to become stronger, to be mm -hmm. more implemented in all the countries of Europe uh, and uh, and so on. Uh, yeah. You don't have to worry. We won't hold you accountable for uh, any things you say right now. <laughs> so in four years to come. No, I, no. I mean, I, I I I did state a few things in the video. I did in in before the before the general meeting. But I, yeah, it's uh, 
I mean, to be honest, uh, the board of Irma uh, is uh, is not a political uh, society, not a political entity, but but that uh, pursues certain uh, like uh, personal goals or so. But but it's more like a working body that that uh, um, that helps the association turn. Uh, yeah, but I think you you gave us a nice insight as well, and I think uh, at least my takeaway from from uh, your statements right now was also that you really want to help the early career researchers. So uh, actually, us the early people, which is really nice to hear, and which is uh, also very important, I think, from my perspective. And um, that leads me to the next section. I would like to ask you a little bit about your personal pathway, about your personal career a little bit, and maybe give us some advice then for our own career. So what was most important in your career pathway? Which aspects, maybe which small stones? Maybe sometimes it's just a small event or something like this. I don't know. It's, um, can you give us there some insights maybe? Mm -hmm. So of course the, those things that are important, but which you didn't really, I mean that were just luck, you know, in some sense good fortune. So, so and but this is also I think worthwhile to rec to recognize and and note mm -hmm. that, for instance, I have been fortunate to have had to have met uh, extraordinary supervisors myself uh, as a as a young researcher. Um, and uh, and of course it was uh, to some extent fortune or luck, but but uh, but it could perhaps nevertheless be uh, be important to recognize the import that 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 uh, this is is a, is a strong factor. The people you get to work with and and uh, can can take inspiration from and so on. But uh, also, I would say pursuing, uh, I mean, later the opportunities, the interests of the, that, that uh, are, are possible in the context where you are. So I, I had a former colleague uh, who said that you create, I mean, so in some sense, you have to construct your own career. You cannot just mm -hmm. wait for others to, I mean, and I think that is especially true in, in, uh, when uh, uh, in the area of mathematics education, because it's always developing and, and uh, new institutional demands and so on arise. So, I mean, you can, I mean, you cannot simply wait for, to follow the stream and, and that somebody will, will help uh, promote you or something like that. Uh, well, I think this is of course also a, a triviality in a way, but but uh, you really construct your own career by mm -hmm. by uh, following your intuition and and also seizing the I mean rather than searching for for opportunities that are simply not there, then seizing the the possibilities that are available in the institutions around you. Mm -hmm. um, I think you also gave us uh, an important advice uh, regarding the people to connect with. You mentioned your supervisors, but I think um, also inside Yermi, there are many possibilities and inside Yermi for us early career researchers to connect with each other and therefore then get to know each other a little bit better and find uh, maybe peers or also senior researchers in our research area with whom we can connect. To oh yeah. I, I think collaboration partners is important throughout your career. And, and of mm -hmm. course, uh, one of the big opportunities that are provided by, by Irma and the, the summer schools, the conferences and so on is to, to be able to create a, a network of international network at an early stage, because it's very likely that those who are most uh, most uh, close to you in terms of interests and so on they are not in the same school in the same institution as you so 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 I, and i think this, this is also of course a, a career defining uh, mm -hmm. uh, thing to to find good collaboration partners not not only because uh, you can do interesting work with them but but also uh, to, uh, to to take uh, to learn from them and, and, and to be shaped by by their way to 
to approach things. So, so, so I think the international uh, network is is very important in mathematics education research, also because I mean, there's no no national specificity or very little national specificity of the of the problems we work with. It's the same mathematics that is taught at primary, at secondary, tertiary level, everywhere in the world. So, and and we can own and we can really learn a lot from from looking at at the I mean beyond the cultural variations by working together with people that have other uh, in other cultural contexts. Um, I would like to zoom in a little bit and ask you there a little bit more. Uh, which advice was helpful for you or maybe would have been helpful at the beginning of your career? Um, so maybe let's take a step back, maybe during a PhD, maybe shortly after your PhD. Um, what was there or what would have been helpful? Hmm. Yeah. Would you do something differently? Maybe that's a similar question. I don't know whether there's something you gave us already some advice. I just wanted to maybe also uh, pose this question. I mean, you oh. already gave us many hints. Yeah, that is, it's uh, difficult to... to um, hmm, it's, it's a difficult question because it's, it's like you would you would look for one like magical uh, <laughs> advice. <laughs> so I would be very, I would be very happy if I knew such such an advice. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, yeah. So I think uh, one thing that I have perhaps not so much received as an explicit at, as an explicit advice, but more as ex, like an example by doing from from at, especially my. Master thesis advisor, but also uh, later uh, supervisor uh, for PhD is, is a, I mean, follow, tr trust your tastes in terms of, of and, and your intuition in terms of what problems to pursue. I think one of the most mm -hmm. important pro things in the world, I mean, the actions in the life of a researcher is to choose the right problem to work on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think people, should be more careful about that because sometimes it's like people just continue to work on the same problem forever without I don't know I'm, perhaps I'm exaggerating a little bit but this choice of problem um, is, is I think really important and, and, and to develop a taste for where is really a, an intellectually stimulating and and at the same time feasible problem to work on that, that that's very difficult so it's not an advice it's just pointing out a difficulty but I don't think you are, you can yourself get further with that than than uh, really trying to to uh, to develop a, a taste, personal taste, and, and trust that. Uh, so that's also why I think this this uh, when you supervise people, it's so important not to give them a problem to work on. I mean, fully made. Even if you could had a if you had a problem, you would really like to. And to work on, but to listen first to their own intuition about where I mean, where do they think there is an interesting? Uh, I just it's the same in mathematics education and and pure mathematics. I think this first intuition about where is there an intellectual stim stimulate that's that something that would intellectually stimulate me to think about and work on. Uh, it's really important. So not not just jump on some problem that you superficially think it would be politically. Uh, expedient to pursue, but 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 really to spend some time on that. What you're passionate about, where you would like to spend. I mean, let's face it: when you do your PhD, you spend a lot of time on this topic. So. Yeah, and then unfortunately, I think many PhD problems are kind of given by this, perhaps also the funding agency. So you mm -hmm. you're kind of forced to to work within a certain. Or you, choose to work within a certain area, but there's still room usually mm. for shaping the problem and, and uh, uh, making some, some key choices. Uh, so so I, I don't think one should just uh, swallow a, a, a question, a problem from others like that. 
Um, I think you already answered the next question. So I would um, which advice would you give to young or early career researchers? Um, what stuck with me was something you mentioned earlier to always be amazed by the mathematics that we should teach. Um, that's something I really like uh, among the many statements that you gave us and the many great statements and inspirational things you said. And I think also the inspiration and the personal taste for the problem. I think that's also very important stuff with me. Um, if it's fine with you, or do you have some other uh, advice which you would like to give to us? Well, in or this area, yeah, I think in this area, perhaps, uh, I think it's really important that we, I mean, um, are concerned about the specificity of mathematics mm -hmm. education. So I'm I'm sometimes a little bit uh, saddened by uh, uh, what appears where, when it appears like that that the mathematical part of the research is is just kind of a an aside uh, or something like it's just it could be mm. any other topic you are talking about. Mm. Uh, so so I think we could uh, usefully stress more the that mathematics education research is also doing mathematics. It's, it's mm -hmm. a very important part of mathematics education research. So also in, in the mm -hmm. developing of young researchers in this area, I think it could be, it would be important to realize that you continue to learn mathematics, maybe not advanced mathematics in the, in the academic sense, but, but you, you continue to learn about the mathematics that is, uh, is part of your research. Um, and, uh, uh, so it's not just an uh, advice, to, uh, I think what I was talking about was more like an advice to teachers to keep curious about the things you're teaching, but also to keep uh, alert and uh, vigilant and mm -hmm. uh, interested about the mathematics that you that is part of your research mm -hmm. uh, is, is, I think, uh, important for this area to develop as more like, uh, that's just a kind of trivial appendix to general education. Thank you very much. Um, that's more or less, um, those are more or less the main topics I wanted to cover. So at the end, I would like to ask some short questions. So I would like to ask uh, you um, to, not to think too much about it, but just to um, answer the questions spontaneously. So, which app did you use the most during the last few months? <laughs> I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I more than uh, expected the answer, to be honest, after you said that you were in a lot of meetings. <laughs> and which acronym did do you encounter in your daily work? Well, uh, Irma, KU, <laughs> uh, IND, <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of my institute. And uh, in your opinion, what would be the hot topic in uh, 10 years from now, 2031? Oh, in mathematics education research? Yeah, or maybe also in, in, in general sense. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps to be honest, I don't know. I mean, the, the re it's even hard to know what is a hot, hot topic now. So to project ten years from now, I, I mean, you could say, you could be smart and say something about technology and so on. But but uh, I think this has been hot for thirty years already. So <laughs> it, it's very difficult to predict. <laughs> okay, then the next question: even or odd numbers? I like uh, even numbers. <laughs> Carl, oh, thank you very much for your time. It was Thanks for having really, me. It was a pleasure uh, from my side to talk with you, to ask you some questions, to get some insights. Um, now I would like to open the stage a little bit and I would like to see whether there are some questions from our attendees to Carl. Um, I think to motivate that a little bit more, I don't know when will be the next possibility for you to ask the Ermi president in such a, a familiar setting something. So please feel free to ask, to share with us your questions and use the chat. <laughs> 